Hello, everybody. Good, good afternoon and welcome to the Q&A with the Center for Student Success. Um, we are here today to discuss any questions that you might have about registration in your schedule and also any questions that you might have about support services that are available in the Center for Student Success. My name is Molly McClelland. I'm the director of the Center for Student Success, and I am here with my good friends and buddies from the CSS, Angelo Gargaro, who's our moderator today. He will be also advising students in the School of Business. Uh, Emily Quidetto helps out with our engineers. Stephanie, Stephanie Wytovich has biology and uh, funeral service. All of them, Stephanie, do you wanna tell them what you do? Yes. <laughs> So I have criminal justice, I have intelligence and national security, forensic science, bio, and the funerary service. And Judy Cheney, who helps out with undecideds, the humanities, uh, psychology and behavioral sciences, and Michael Elko, who is here to talk to you a little bit about tutoring. So the Center for Student Success is a wonderful place on campus that every student should get to know. Um, we are located on the fifth floor of the West Penn building. We have every intention of being able to be on campus and to see you this fall. Um, we have also just come off of a very interesting spring as I'm sure all of you can relate. So we have been using virtual platforms as well, which we'll continue to do. Uh, we know that many of our students are commuters, they have work schedules that they're working around, and so it's really our goal to establish strong relationships with our students in whatever form is uh, best for them. So we'll get started today um, just talking a little bit about some of the services that we provide in the center. Uh, we handle all undergraduate advising, so anytime you want to change your schedule or make an adjustment to your schedule, uh, if you decide along the way to change your major or add, an, add a minor, which many students are doing, we help you with all of the processes and the forms related to um, academic mm -hmm. transactions at the university. Also, a great place to go if you just don't really know quite where to go. Uh, we start, um, this is an, one example, uh, forming relationships with students before they even get to campus. So we're happy. Uh, to be the place, a point of reference for you if you have a question and you're just not sure where you need to be. Uh, we have great relationships across the campus. It's really our goal not to just give you a phone number or an email address, but to find out the information for you or to connect you to one of our good friends across the campus and other support offices and areas. Mm -hmm. um, we also have, we're, we're really a one-stop shop for um, academic support services. So we offer disability services. If you've received an accommodation in your K-12 experience, we can mirror those to a large extent in the college environment. Uh, there's a documentation process that you'll need to go through. Uh, so any questions that you might have, you can reach out to me. We're also going to be doing another webinar in July, specifically for, specifically for tutoring and disability services. So you can also jump on then to find out more information about the services that we provide. Um, so I'm going to introduce to you uh, Michael Elko, who oversees tutoring services. That's another resource that, that is available that's free to students that's right inside the CSS. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Michael Elko, as Molly said, and I oversee tutoring services for the university. And I just want to let you know that we're here to help you with your academic uh, career and other things um, as they pop up. Um, tutoring is one of the resources that is provided to you. It's included in your uh, tuition. I encourage you all to uh, visit us sometime when you need help or if you just want to check it out, you can certainly visit us. We are both online and on ground. And in the fall, we will continue that way. You'll be able to have appointments online and in person. And we'll get an idea of what that looks like as we approach the um, next seminar, or not seminar, webinar uh, that Molly mentioned um, in, in July for tutoring. I urge you all to uh, join us then. Um, tutoring uh, is divided into two centers. We have the tutoring center and the writing center. The tutoring center handles 
primarily your STEM courses and your humanities courses. And the Writing Center uh, handles uh, requests across the curriculum because as you probably are aware in your senior year, you're probably doing a lot of writing. As you transition into college, you'll be doing a lot of writing and we will uh, be able to help you at any point uh, in the writing process. So um, I encourage you to visit us. We have peer tutors, so there will be students there who have taken the courses that you will be taking your first year, or if you're a transfer student, uh, we have upper level course coverage as well. So um, we're on the fifth floor, the physical location, but remotely, I think Angelo threw, probably threw up the link for our scheduling software. I urge you to take a look at it. That will be expanded in the fall. Right now we're in the summer session, so that's reflecting the course courses we cover during the summer session. Um, um, I'll be ex I'm excited to meet you all. I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna turn this over to the OGAG, Angelo Gargaro, who is our master of ceremonies, and he'll introduce you to all these other great people. And, um, and Stephanie, who used to work in the tutoring center, she has a, it's good to see you during this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quiet now. You got it. You promise. Hey, Michael, no, thank I, you so much I, for the I'm introduction. <laughs> thank you, Michael, for the introduction. As Molly said, and Michael, my name is Angelo Gargaro. I will be moderating this webinar. So thank you to everybody who joined us today and are giving us your time. This is uh, an opportunity for you to ask questions to your CSS uh, coordinator on really anything involving Point Park, your schedule, registration, campus, where to go, what to do, how to do it. We are your main resource for information, so we're gonna try to get that ball rolling right now. When you ask a question, you can do so via the questions tab of the GoToWebinar control panel. Everything you ask is private, and when we answer it, it will be answered generally. So uh, feel free to ask away. And uh, if you haven't noticed, there's a chat area. I have been posting different links and email addresses. So please make sure you review that information and also follow us on all social media at Point Park CSS and our YouTube page. All right, enough of all that. Let's, uh, let's get some questions going. We need some questions, first of all. So feel free to start asking them and we will start answering away. I'll kind of kick things off here to uh, get the vibe and the flow going for the CSS coordinators. This is for anybody uh, on the team. How does an incoming freshman end up receiving their first schedule? What's the process like? Okay, well, I'll, I'll take that. I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes here. Um, we create uh, all schedules for the incoming freshmen, and it's based on faculty recommendations from your department. So um, I advise psychology and behavioral sciences people, and the faculty in those areas have said, okay, we want the students to take uh, the, you know, the, these five classes. Now, everybody coming in, all freshmen, regardless of um, major, are taking the University 101 class, which is um, kind of like a freshman seminar class, you're taking English 101 or Com 101. Um, so everybody's taking one of, you know, th those those two classes. And then the rest are filled in, like I said, based on the faculty recommendations. Thank you, Judy. Another question that we have received throughout uh, these webinars, and we have done uh, a few of these to try to engage and talk to all the incoming freshmen and transfer students and uh, just kind of meet you in the summertime before the fall semester starts, a lot of questions uh, circled around the University 101 class. So Molly, I'd like to give you a chance to kind of explain what University 101 is. You'd think it, after it, months of doing this, I would have it by now. You would think. <laughs> dramatic pause. It was, it was. I was just, I just wanted everybody on the edge of their seats about University 101. So University 101 is called um, City University Life. Um, it is really what it sounds like. So it's a way for us to um, get our freshmen who are new to campus and, and many of them new to the city, um, acclimated to what it means to be a successful college student, um, what it means to live and uh, study in an urban community. Um, so we really connect through um, a series of projects 
and um, solving of community problems to our community uh, to understand of the, of the people who live within it, both our classmates and university peers and um, community, and then the larger Pittsburgh community. So it really starts out with um, a general general orientation to what college success looks like. So you'll learn uh, note taking, time management, all of those sorts of skills that um, are just as important for being successful in college as as the content um, and what you do in the classroom. So we work quite a bit on that. Uh, we talk about some of the um, community features and issues related to diversity and community members. And then we shift for the final part of the semester into actually tackling some of the programs that exist or problems that exist uh, in our local community. So it's a really good opportunity to connect with your peers, uh, to meet people. We see, we see students that met in University 101, you know, kind of travel together and stay tight through their entire university experience. Um, so it's just a really good good way to, to in a small environment, um, create a set of sense of community and uh, introduce yourself to a, set, a whole set of new people from all around the country and all around the world. Awesome, thank you Molly for diving into yeah. what University City Life is and uh, the value it provides to our students. Uh, we got our first question in here from uh, one of the attendees. So. Let's go everybody. I know you got questions and we will help answer them. So this question, how are the pre-med courses scheduled? I, I can't remember who is our pre-med here in the group. Uh, do we need to pay extra fees for the additional courses? So for pre-med, usually, I mean, in all honesty, because it's one of our smaller programs, I work really closely with Dr. Frost on this. You shouldn't be, to my knowledge, you shouldn't be paying anything extra to it. That would be more of a question that I would kind of send out to student accounts. Um, math is not, I'm as far away from a math person as humanly possible. I don't touch financial aid. Our office usually doesn't touch financial aid um, questions. So I would reach out to student accounts and then we are actually having a um, office hours on Wednesday um, with Dr. Frost that uh, you should have got an email the other day for. And she could actually help kind of fill that and give you a little bit more of an idea of how those classes are orchestrated. Thank you, Stephanie. Here's a question. So Angela, that I just many... wanted to build off, can I just build off of that really quickly just please, to, to talk, talk in general about um, credit loads and, and cost? So you're considered a full-time student taking anywhere from 12 to 18 credits. We do have some situations where there's an overload, but it's something that the university has recommended. So you may have, based upon um, your entrance test scores, placed into a supplemental writing lab. So that's a one credit course that we really know based upon the fact that now we've been doing it for probably close to eight years now. Uh, we, uh, we know the value of giving stu some students extra writing support. Uh, it's actually being discussed as um, something that they're thinking about having every student do because writing is such a big part of the curriculum you know you're going to write for all of your gen ed courses um, point park really does stress a lot of writing across the curriculum so um, we want to make sure that students are able to be successful so you might have one of these kind of one one credit add-on courses the same holds true for honor students that might take you over 18 credits in those cases we reach out to student accounts and there's a no additional charge for students now, some students want to finish early or they want to take a larger course load or, you know, they don't want to have to go to summer school. They want to finish in the spring and they will go up words of 21 credits. In those cases, we need to approve it. We want to make sure that you're a student that's that's capable of, of handling that additional load. Uh, in that case, you are billed for the additional credits. But there might be some situations in this first schedule that that you're over 18 credits and you won't be charged any additional fees. Thank you, Molly. This next question will be for Emily. And in a similar vein to the credit amount uh, that we were just kind of talking about, how much, uh, how many credits uh, of, of the first semester for mechanical engineering, Emily? Um, it really depends. If you are a freshman student, you're looking at probably 17 to 18 credits that first semester. 
Um, and that is really because of the lab courses and the math classes that you're required to take that first semester. Um, if you're a transfer student, we really need to see what you transferred in to determine you know, what classes you're in. Um, the engineering programs across the board are small programs at Point Park, and they're very sequential. So um, again, depending on what you transferred in, that could really impact your first semester. But if you're coming in as just a traditional freshman first semester as a mechanical student, I'd be looking at about 17 credits that semester. Thank you, Emily. This next question I will direct to Judy. So Judy, I have an 8 a.m. class. Can I get that changed? <laughs> it, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Um, it depends, number one, what class it is. Um, if, if there are other open sections, and sure, I can, um, I, I'd be happy to try to change that. Please reach out, email me, um, whoever is asking, and I can go in and see what I can do about that. Sometimes there, you, there isn't any wiggle room on that. I mean, just, you know, some classes are offered at the times that they're offered. But if it's something that I can uh, move for you, I'll be glad to do it. We're and always happy to look crazy. into. I'm sorry, Angelo. I don't mean to step on your toes. Um, I'm it's sitting Judy. I always right have to. I have. I always have to follow Judy. So, um, one thing that I will say, and, and I'm appreciative of the question being asked. Um, if know yourself as a student. If 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 you know that night classes is really not your thing. Um, make that known there there may be a case where it's the only section of something offered but if there are other options it makes sense to in that way and in other ways really know what makes you to you know learn the best to be the most successful so if you're not a morning person don't attempt all morning classes because you're try trying to change your way of life don't do that try to do that over the summer uh, work within your strengths work to your strengths if you are you know, a, a visual learner, find ways to, to make things in the classroom or in your note taking more visual. So really much of college success is about um, knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are. And if more, getting up for a morning class is a weakness, reach out and we'll do the best that we can to make sure that um, we don't load you up in the morning. Thank you, Molly. This next question, I'm gonna direct to Emily and Molly or anybody else really that would want to answer. Um, I think we're probably gonna have to be general with this. Any idea about the international students? How is the process with the US Embassy uh, going to be in the pandemic situation? I'm thinking maybe we want to provide some resources on the international office as well, but Emily, I know you work with them a lot. Molly, what would you say to that? I'm going to say email me. I'm gonna say email me your specific question. Um, depending on what country you're coming from, if there's a travel ban that's still part of that, um, all of those things could impact the answer that I would give you. So I would say if you are coming from outside of the US, contact specifically your CSS coordinator. Um, and if it's a question that we're not able to answer, we will reach out to the international office for additional resources. And the other thing that I'll add to that is that, um, you know, we've we've, unfortunately had had to um, leave campus in, in the spring for an extended period of time. Uh, and to look at the silver lining of that and to see it as a positive, it's, it's helped us as a university to really understand what it means to support students and to educate students beyond what is typical or traditional for us. So in our experience, it meant how do we how do we continue to have relationships with students and support them and have the same rapport with them that we would have if they were showing up in our office which is why you know we all got trained and quickly were able to to move to these uh, virtual platforms so that we still could be seeing and engaging and interacting with students we are planning as a university for the same to hold true for the academic piece it is our hope that the virus is not a part of our lives forever and ever and ever. We want it to be done by the time it's time for us to come to campus. But we also are realistic and know that we have to be prepared for whatever circumstances we have come across our campus community uh, in the summer and in, in the fall and beyond. So, um, you know, it, it is something that you'll definitely receive 
significant amounts of communications, particularly as we move closer to the start of the semester. There will be a back to school um, publication that's sent out to all incoming students. That's to come out the week of July 6th with more guidance about what, what safety measures the university will be employing. Uh, but if you are in a situation where you're nervous about what this means for me and my travel, uh, make sure to remain connected. So Emily's a great resource. The folks in the international office are, are prepared and ready for these concerns. We've talked to them quite a bit about the possibility of students moving to fully online classes if and when they can't make it. So we have a really robust set of online offerings. We could make adjustments to the schedule to accommodate that first semester to you in your home country if, if need be. So we've talked to them quite a bit uh, over the spring in planning that this could be the case. So just know and feel confident that we're prepared to address your needs, uh, whatever they may be. I'll also toss in there that if you are an incoming freshman, this is your first time coming to the US, typically if you're not in one of the countries that is currently part of any kind of bans or any kind of travel restrictions, you typically can come in 30 days before the start of the semester. So that does give you plenty of time to um, self-quarantine before the start of the semester, before orientations happen, all of those type of things. So again, I would say uh, that particular student, please reach out to me directly with questions, concerns, worries. All right, great discussion so far. Great questions, keep them coming and we'll keep on answering. This next one, um, give me a minute to, to say everything because uh, it's a nice long question here. It's great you have University 101. Do you address life skills as well, like managing money, checkbook, saving, credit cards, washing and ironing clothes, social interacting with others, social media, um, as well as being respectful and respecting others, the art of discussion, et cetera. I'll answer just quickly in, um, an example of one of those, and if others know of some within their course uh, degree requirements, please jump in. Uh, there is a uh, course, BMGT 271, which is the, called the money thing. It's a really popular course at the university. While it's a required course in a lot of the business programs, it is also an option within the thematic core. And the thematic core are 10 required classes, some specifics towards major, uh, where sometimes you get an option of, of a class to take in certain categories. So in the Succeed in Business, Thematic Core, the money thing could be an option that you would take there that would help you understand finances as a college student, loans, debt, uh, repayment, interest, things like that. Does anybody else know of any other courses similar to that, whether it's in the thematic core or maybe within your own degree requirements where it may leverage some of those life skills? I guess if I had to make a recommendation, something that I talk with my lit students, because I teach um, in the literary arts department as well, is just um, the marketing classes I think are really good if you're looking to get more information for social media or building your brand. Um, I think that that would be another good option that you could take um, in regards to your thematic core that help might, you know, build some of those skills as well. And we do within University 101. So, so it, it, it will be adjusted a, a little bit this semester as it always is based upon what we feel like students emerging needs are um, or, or the feedback that we get from students in the year prior. So we do have a social media module that really does discuss that online presence and, and you know what you're kind of branding yourself with, good and bad, for here to eternity. Um, some things just don't stand the test of time. And so <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to be thinking about that. It's good to be thinking about the situations that you um, find yourself in. Um, you know, the, the smartphones are, are, are a blessing and a curse for sure. And, you know, you never know where uh, a video or a picture might find itself. So we do have the, um, the person who oversees our university social media come in and talk about just some very real life situations, which we know and witness every single day of somebody being caught on camera uh, or something getting posted or somebody posting something. And I think she says that 95% of companies now do a Google search or a background search of social media and, and what's out there on the internet. So, you know, it, it really is important because this is also the time that you're 
really having the best time of your lives too. So sometimes those things come together and um, things crash and, and we just wanna make sure that our students are representing themselves um, as professionals to be and community members as, as, as good as they possibly can. Uh, so many of the things that you alluded to in that, in that um, question will be covered uh, within that course. And as I said before, please just come to us. We all know how to do laundry. Judy Cheney has the whitest whites on the planet. And I'm sure she'll tell you the, pro the proper way to maneuver an iron. She's always well pressed. You don't want to ask for me, ask me. I would say just buy things that you don't have to iron, but we're, we're happy to, we're happy to help out. There's, there's no question that we haven't heard or answered at some point during our illustrious careers. If there's one takeaway from this webinar, the director of the Center for Student Success advises to find clothes that you don't have to iron. That is life skill <laughs> tip 101. <laughs> Jeez, that's awesome. I, I, I need to start doing that. All right. so. <laughs> Moving along, this is a general question, so anybody who wants to jump in, uh, what about the on-campus jobs? Do we need to apply before we're on campus? I am posting a link right now to uh, the student employment information on our website, so you can check that as well. But anybody in the group, any, any advice there? So they do have a work-study um, workshop. It's within that first week of campus. So if you are eligible for federal work study, there's an orientation program that every student has to go through before the process starts. So you wanna make sure to do that. Uh, and then they also give you a, um, a list of, of where the job availabilities are, where the placements and opportunities are. So um, I will say that there are often more students who qualify for work study than there are positions on campus. So you wanna make sure that you're doing that um, right away. I will say that, that the CSS has some availability, so we're gonna be looking for um, a few good people to staff some vacancies that we have in our work study pool. Um, and that's, but that's for domestic students. If you're an international student, there are certainly more limited uh, options for you on campus. There are some, uh, many students work in our dining facilities or in the bookstore, but we also have opportunities within uh, the tutoring center. So we have a lot of international students that help to support um, our work with students in serving as peer tutors. So um, if you're if you're it feeling like where do I go as an international student, feel free to reach out to us as well, and we can direct you to some pretty good people and opportunities. Thank you, Molly. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next question. Great discussion on classes and classwork. Thank you for the kind words. Can students download any specific Point Park University software ahead of time to reduce stress and iron out kinks before classes begin? I'll jump in real quick. I'm posting a link to technology services. It just gives you a, a, like a broad kind of understanding of the things you may or may not need from that perspective. I think all programs at Point Park, it's safe to say that like a Microsoft Office, if you're on a Mac, getting pages, um, I'm trying to think of the equivalents on Mac, but you can run Microsoft Office on a Mac as well. I think that that's definitely like a standard right up front, but there may be more program specific software. I'm, I'm not sure if that exists in this group. Emily, do you wanna jump in? Is there anything for engineering? There are some classes where the programs are only available through um, certain labs on campus, um, but those labs are open um, extended hours and there are classes in there, but it works around your schedule. Um, those programs are typically upper level engineering classes whenever you get into like pro E and you're working with ANSYS. Um, there's just not a student version of certain software programs and it would be an astronomical price to ask you to purchase those type of things. So um, whenever you get to that level, um, just heads up that there are gonna be some times where you're gonna have to do a little bit of work extra on campus. Something that I might add too, cause I know we have a lot of the humanity students here as well. Um, from a writing perspective, you know, Angela talked about getting Microsoft Office, but there is a small book that I recommend to all of my composition students if you're a psych student, if you're going to be writing a lot of papers, um, the book is called The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. And I, you know, I'm a writer by trade and I use the exact same book that I got my freshman year of undergrad. 
So if you know that you, you're struggling with grammar or that you want to be better with grammar, that is one of the best resources that I can recommend getting. And I think you can get it for under $5. It's a very small book, but it is the Grammar Bible, and it will save you repeatedly. <laughs> so that would be my recommendation because it certainly saves me all the time. I would also like to add, I off, I do own Microsoft Office, but I often times find myself using like Google Docs, Google Sheets, that's uh, web-based and is free and it function, functions just like its counterpart of Word or Excel. You can even uh, export and download into those formats, .xl or whatever it is, or .word you know, or whatever the extensions are. So if you're looking for something immediately, you could definitely use Google Sheets, Google Docs, and I believe students get at least some sort of discount with Microsoft Office through the university, but I'm not 100% on that. Molly, do you know anything more about that? I believe so, and I think all of that information is posted on the website. I, I would also imagine that they're going to be a pretty significant piece of the back to school guide, uh, again, because we want to prepare students um, as the president announced, we will be and we will be ending the semester's in in person instruction at Thanksgiving, um, and shifting kind of the the um, final projects, midterm, uh, final exams, all of those sorts of things online um, to kind of keep be able to keep our community safe. So they're going to play a much bigger role. You know, again, that we've already we've already had trial by fire, so we already had to transition in a three-day period. Uh, this time we will be much more thoughtful and much more able to serve the needs of students because we've already kind of faced the challenges uh, for, for a number of months that happen when you aren't thoughtful and, and planning ahead for a transition. So um, yeah, definitely take a look at what IT has to offer. Um, I've also recommended that they start to curate kind of some um, a place where students can have a central place to go for things like free internet access or free software that are that are put out by external providers from the university. So if it's if it's you know an access issue, we want to make sure that those aren't the, the sorts of things that our students are running into um, when if and when labs are closed or any of those situations arise based upon uh, the virus and keeping the community safe. So we'll be prepared. Um, again, one thing that I think we always try to stress repeatedly is make sure that you are an avid checker of your Point Park email. There will um, come a place in time where, uh, you know, sweet mama bear, we don't, we don't check, we don't send our emails to your personal emails anymore. So we want you to start using your Point Park email address. That's where all of the university correspondence will come through. Um, in terms of the Center for Student Success, we will also, in times where um, it's something very critical that we need to respond, you need you to respond to, we will send a text to you that drives you to some sort of process or thing that you need to do. But we always make sure to use that when, when we have some business for you to handle. Um, we're understanding, we're, we're living the fact that email fatigue is a reality of life. We get hundreds of emails a day. so. So we understand how easy it is to miss information. So when it's something that's important, we're um, really trying to work to find ways to, to get it in front of students and allow them to know and understand what's available to them and what, what we might need for them to do in terms of processes or procedures. So um, please be checking your email, your Point Park email, and you'll be finding consistent updates from the university in, in general, but also from various departments on things like technology. If you're having any issues accessing your Point Park email, I posted in the chat the email for the IT help desk, so you can reach out to them as well and they can assist if there's any issues uh, along that. Uh, looks like everybody's starting to get comfortable with asking the questions. We have a lot um, that are coming in, so to, to jump into the next one, uh, this is gonna be initially directed to Emily, but I think we could all probably weigh in. As an international student from where we have to, as an international student, we have to collect our textbooks for the first semester in mechanical engineering. Where would somebody get their textbooks, Emily? Okay, so a couple options. Um, we do have a bookstore on campus, um, so that's an option. You can purchase new, used, or rent textbooks through um, the university. Um, you also have the option to 
uh, buy your textbooks from a third party, so an outside source. Uh, usually, what I tell students is it is up to you if you want to have your textbooks the first day of class or wait until you receive the syllabus for the course. Um, some instructors are using the textbook 100%. Others say, um, you know, we're only going to use it for this part of the class and you can use the reserved copy that's in the library. Um, there's also the option that, you know, you can go to class that first day and, you know, Amazon Prime, you can get it the next day. So it's up to you um, how you want to purchase your books, where you want to purchase your books. Um, but you know, it, the ISBN number is typically listed on the bookstore website for each of the classes, so you can see exactly which edition of the book you need. Um, it, and it's really up to you if you, again, want to purchase them before you get here, um, after you get here, or even after the first day of class. That's usually what I advise my students is uh, to wait until you at least contact the instructor. Maybe you want to email them and check in early or wait until the first day of class. Sometimes. Uh, instructors will give handouts or printouts, PDFs digitally. Uh, and I know Molly, in the other webinars, you've weighed in a little bit about some other resources that maybe in the pipeline. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah. So, um, you know, we we really understand and appreciate the uh, the cost of uh, the tuition and sending a child to college. Uh, many of you are paying for your own education, uh, or your families are are you know kind of buckling down and really making a significant investment to send you to Point Park. So uh, we've been talking a lot about um, ways to save money, ways that our students can save money, and and how do we support um, kind of those those ancillary costs that that tend to add up. Um, we know that transportation for students who are commuting to campus becomes a thing. Um, you're paying for uh, bus passes or parking. Uh, so you know, the other component of that is always the cost of textbooks. We have many faculty on campus who are starting to explore the idea of open educational resources or OERs. Um, those are free, readily available open sources that faculty can post uh, related to the content um, uh, that they teach in their class. And students can download and access that information through our library system at, at no additional cost. So that is gaining momentum on our campus. Uh, I think we really got to understand the value of it as we as we shifted off campus. Um, we know going into this year that many students were unable to work or travel um, because they were impacted by by um, COVID and there weren't as many opportunities uh, given the circumstances. So we're really starting to think about cost effective ways to deliver this content to students. Uh, so you will, in many of your classes, have faculty members who say, nope, you know, you can get this from the library or, you know, I'm going to upload all of these documents to Schoology, which is the site that we use uh, for many of our classes um, for submissions, presentations, um, you know, all, all the documents related to a course. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, th I think that those things are happening more often. And, and, I, and I think that's why we all say, maybe just wait until you get to campus or the class starts because you don't wanna purchase something and then you have a faculty member say, ah, you know, I decided to upload this or we're gonna go without a text this semester. So those things do happen um, and, and you, can get, you can get resources so quickly now, you can get your text so quickly now via electronic or renting or having them delivered. Um, that it's really there's really no rush to it, and there seems like there's more upside to waiting um, than not. So uh, I would say wait. I've I've actually used older editions in some cases. So in in you know some disciplines the content is not changing all that much. You might order the ninth edition after talking to the faculty member instead of the eleventh or twelfth, and get a twenty dollar textbook with the same information. Um, and instead of paying $120. Um, there are some differences. The technology books can get to be a, a little bit expensive, um, but we are also um, building up the resources that are available in the library. So as a Point Park student, you can go in there and scan materials for free and then just email that PDF to yourself. So more and more students who are looking to save costs are going to the library, getting those resources from Reserve, and then using that to kind of cut down on, on the cost. So 
Um, you know, that takes time, but but certainly it's it's well worth the the savings uh, for the for the cost of textbooks. Thank you, Molly. This next question will be for Judy. Uh, and I've, I've already responded to this individual. I believe you'll wanna work with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I think it's a good question to put out there for everybody to hear. As a psychology major, I'm currently enrolled in an environmental science class. Is there any way I can take another class instead of that one? The reason why I bring that up, Judy, is is that a required class in the program or is that part of the thematic core or electives? That would be part of the thematic core. And um, like I had said before, we create the schedules for the students. Um, so if you're not happy with that, then certainly, as Angelo said, reach out, email me directly, and I'll see what I can do to change that. Thank you, Judy. Uh, this will be for uh, anyone in the group. Can a student join the honors program in, in the spring semester, or do they have to wait to be a sophomore? No, join now, right? I mean, um, uh, is, isn't that the, don't we want them to join as soon as possible? We do, if it, the honors program, it's very doable. So it's it's only 18 credits or really six courses of um, honors coded courses. Um, if you're coming in here in the first semester as a freshman, there are two courses that you can kind of already get out of the way in your first semester of classes. So there's an honor section of University 101, and there's also there are also honor sections of either English 101 or Com 101. So there's an option to there's an opportunity to get two of those, and then you would only have four honors um, courses to take for the remainder of your time at Point Park. So there's a benefit to doing it this semester. Um, you can reach out to the honors department. Um, Angelo, I'm sure will post that email um, and link to that website, that web page. Um, you can you can apply at any time. So, you know, if it's not something that you feel like you want to do in the first semester, there would be an opportunity for you to apply. Um, but again, you might want to uh, apply now just for the fact that it, you're really able to get two uh, very manageable courses um, in the uh, that are honors coded in that first semester. Thank you, Molly. Uh, we are at 12.50 right now, Eastern, so we have 10 minutes left. I encourage everybody to continue asking any questions that you still may have, but I just wanna take a moment to let you know that when you exit the webinar here in the next 10 minutes, there will be a survey that pops up. It is three questions, very quick and easy. If you could please take a moment to give us some feedback. Uh, you'll also have the ability to ask any additional questions. Maybe you didn't feel comfortable, get a chance here in the webinar. Please take a few moments and fill that out upon exiting the webinar. This will be a general question to the group. When is the best time to declare a double major or a minor? All right, I'll take it. Um, so you are not able to declare a double major or a minor your first semester. So um, it's something that we would start to talk about and see if it is appropriate for you uh, whenever we go to register you for the spring semester classes. Um, and then depending on the double major or the minor, we would actually plot out how it'll fit into your program, if it's gonna add extra time onto you, if you're gonna have to do summer classes, um, all of those type of things. So not something, um, that we need to worry about immediately, uh, but it is something to think about for the spring term. Thank you, Emily. Next question here. Thanks for the info on class schedules. When can students anticipate receiving said schedule? So if adjustments are needed, they can be addressed before classes. All right, I'll I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> oh, there you go, there you go. I'm gonna keep going. Um, so. Usually once you submit your tuition deposit, um, you'll receive an email from us within about a week or so, um, and that will give you instructions on how to access your schedule. Um, that is, again, if you're a freshman and we are creating your schedule. If you're a transfer student, you do have the option to create your own schedule. You will receive an email from the Office of Admissions um, with our contact information in it. Um, there's also a guide on how to schedule classes. So if you're uncomfortable doing it your first semester, want some course recommendations, um, or even want us to schedule your classes for you, um, you would need to reach out to us and, hey, Emily, I need some help there we go next question up here i am an international student can we get internships in the first year or second year i know every program's a little different um but ladies do you know anything about your internships if available 
Well, I know for psychology and behavioral sciences, there are not required internships. Some programs have um, internships built right into the uh, the program guide where you, you where you must take one. Um, they're always recommended. And I know in my two majors, um, I'm going to recommend that you reach out to your faculty uh, uh, once you or once you start to get to know your faculty and your faculty advisor, and they are the ones who would be the most helpful um, helping you get some kind of internship or, or co-op or, or uh, learning type of, of um, situation. So we work also work closely with career development. Um, internships can either be done for credit, which is what Judy is describing. So if, if you're doing an internship for credit, um, it's, it, it's definitely something that has to be approved by the faculty and your academic department to make sure that it meets the requirements of that of those three credits. Um, many students will use, who don't have an internship that's actually built into their program will use their elective credits. So most majors have a couple of, of um, credits of, of electives that allow you to do take a class that you just are really interested in, or in some cases to um, take part in an internship. So career development has a site that's called Handshake. Um, you have to create an account. It helps you to um, look at internships, look at local jobs that are posted. Employers post things through that site um, consistently. It also helps you to make uh, an appointment with a career development counselor. They can help you with a resume. They can help you to, to search for art opportunities and really walk you through all that's available to you through that system. So if you do have a major that doesn't have elective credit or that doesn't have um, an internship built, uh, uh, built into the program, it doesn't mean that it's, that it's not possible and it doesn't mean that it isn't a, a, a valuable experience. Um, companies are looking for um, free labor from smart people to come and assist them in a myriad of different ways. So, you know, as long as you're a, a good student, a good community member, um, there are always going to be opportunities for you and our Office of Career Development uh, can help with that. And they're actually conveniently located right down the hall from us. So you can really get kind of the whole picture um, right there on the fifth floor of West Penn. I also want to okay. toss out there um, the international aspect, yes. You can still do an internship in the U.S. Um, of course, like anything else, there are going to be a couple little extra hoops that you have to jump through, make sure your paperwork is in order. Uh, but our international service as offices will help you with that. And something that I wanted to add um, for my majors, like with criminal justice and forensic science, you have the option of doing an internship that's built into your um, department electives. So that's something that we can start a conversation, you know, about and, you know, in tandem with uh, the department chairs. But for the funeral service students, something that um, Dr. Marnich and I have been talking about a lot is while you're at Point Park, um, you're not going to get a lot of hands-on experience um, working with you know, the reason that you're getting into funeral service to kind of make this not as dark as possible here. <laughs> but <laughs> so we, we um, have been talking about ways to try to get students involved as soon as possible to make sure that you are comfortable and that you enjoy the subject matters that you're studying. So if this is something that you are interested in, um, Dr. Marnich and I are more than happy to kind of start having this conversation with you and see what kind of internship opportunities or even shadowing experiences that we can get you in right from the beginning so you're in the thick of it, you know what you're getting into. Um, that way, if it's not for you, we can look at something else. Um, and if you love it, then we can just run with it. So <laughs> that's something to think about as well. It definitely takes a type. It does. And I am that type. I am so my type for my majors. So you need podcasts, recommendations, book stuff. I got you completely. <laughs> She's not lying. There's two questions left. I want to get to these before we say our goodbyes. I'll quickly answer this one as we have mentioned uh, this earlier. After what limit are the extra credits charged uh, for students who are considering taking double majors? Uh, things like that. After the, the highest level of full-time enrollment is 18 credits. So anything above that uh, will become a different conversation financially. I would advise that you reach out to student accounts and or financial aid offices for more information to see what that looks like. If it's something you can do, 
uh, payment plans, whatever it may be before we actually register and schedule you at that higher level of enrollment. And it's also last... something that we want to talk, if, if you're interested in a double major, it's also important, even though we, you can't declare and, until later, um, having that conversation is really important because you, you might also be thinking about ways to use your summer months um, you know, more effectively and cost efficiently. So we do accept transfer credits. Um, you can take uh, two classes over the summer and, and so long as you get a C or better at that institution and the course is something that we can accept based upon the requirements of your degree, we will bring those credits in. So that's another way to potentially do that in a cost effective way. Many of our students will use the summer months to do things like um, take courses at a community college or do a credit by examination. So we do have options where you can test out of certain courses. You pay the fee to the testing agency, it's about $80, study for the exam, and then if you get a 50 or higher, we can we can bring that in for credit. So all of those considerations are things that we can help you with. That's a lot of information and policies, but if you're thinking about doing a double major, talking to us early so that we can help you to do that effectively and efficiently, both in time and money, is, is an important conversation to have. And I, I just want to jump in and say that there is paperwork for absolutely everything. So like Molly said, you're, you're going to want to, to check with your, your advisor in the center and, um, you know, see what will work best for you and that there is paperwork. Oftentimes, okay. we, uh, the university will not accept the credit if the paperwork isn't filled out. So you don't want to go through the, the process of paying for a class, taking a class, and then not being able to receive the credit. So always check with us first. Thanks, Thank you, Judy. Here's the last question we're going to get to before we uh, sign off here. Uh, if we convert classes from on ground to online, what will change or are there any differences in that? That's a, a pretty nuanced conversation, but does anyone want to give a broad explanation of, of that briefly? I can help. Yeah, I can help out with that um, quite a bit. Um, so there, we've been now for for many weeks talking about the what happens if scenarios, uh, which is why we're structuring the first semester the way that we are. So we wanna make sure that we're front loading um, the first semester, making you know, so that you can get the experiences, the classroom experiences, the lab experiences to the extent possible, um, the courses that kind of don't translate well into an online environment. If we are on campus to start the semester, we want to maximize the time that we are on campus and then transition to online later in the semester after Thanksgiving. If there should be a situation where the virus dictates that we need to leave campus, that it's no longer healthy and safe for students, faculty, and staff, um, as I said before, we've 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 had to do this in a really rapid way. So this has allowed us to be um, much more thoughtful. I was just in a meeting yesterday where they were talking about installing cameras in all of the classrooms so that the instructor is being filmed as they're lecturing or um, delivering the content in the class. And you can log on to that either synchronously at the same time, or it can be recorded for you to view later um, if you're dealing with things like, you know, different time zones and, you know, a, what's eight o'clock in the morning here might be two o'clock in the morning some some other place. So, so we're thinking about ways to make sure that students have most close to a face-to-face in-person experience if and when we should have to go off campus. Um, so that's been, you know, there have been five different committees that have been looking at various elements of university life. Um, I was part of a group that was talking about academic excellence and how do we continue to deliver what we would deliver to you in a classroom if we go into an online environment. Um, our faculty will be trained to use all of the technologies. Um, they will be uh, taught creative ways um, to make sure that you're, you're, they're using technology and keeping students engaged and successful. Um, so there is a plan in place should things have to go online. Thank you, Molly. All right, so we are at the end here. I wanna thank everybody for your questions, but I'm gonna give the opportunity uh, to give the team here uh, you know, their chance to say goodbye or any last words. So let's kick it off with Emily. And before 
Uh, she jumps in. I, w I just want to let everybody know she will be meeting with Dr. Greg Johnson, the department chair for engineering today from two o'clock to three o'clock p.m. Eastern. I am posting the link right now in the chat. You can jump in at two o'clock. There's no registration or anything necessary, more of an intimate one-on-one -on -one with your coordinator and the department chair. So Emily, take it away. Um, so thanks everyone for being here and I really look forward to seeing you in the fall semester. Uh, the big thing, you know, if we're on campus, if we're off campus, it doesn't matter. We are here to support you. Um, we are always available, so absolutely do not hesitate to reach out, uh, email, phone calls, um, whatever is going to work for you, um, video conferencing, whatever we need to do. Um, again, we want this to be the best experience possible for you. So we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Judy, what say you? Well, I'm going to say that Emily said it just perfectly. We are here for you. We um, like students. We love students. We've been working in higher ed, all of us, for, for a number of years. So please don't hesitate. Um, we're here for you. Stephanie, leave us on a, on a morbid <laughs> note, maybe, huh? Oh, goodness. <laughs> don't give me too much room here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just to, to echo what everybody else has kind of been saying, you know, we love our jobs. We're here because, you know, we want to help you transition, um, you know, from everything from high school to to college, from, you know, your relationships. Like, we're here to fill your questions and concerns, personal, professional, academic. Um, if we don't know or we don't have the, um, the capabilities in our office, we can certainly find somebody on campus, you know, who can help you. Um, my office always has coffee and tea and chocolate. I am here, <laughs> like I said, any questions, you know, you know, we're happy to, to help you and we're excited to meet you. Um, and just to kind of piggyback a little bit what I said earlier, especially for like the biology, the pre-med students and the funeral service students, um, we're gonna have open office hours on Wednesday at one o'clock and it'll be me, Dr. Marnich, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Frost um, and Kristen, who is their admin assistant over there so any questions or concerns you have um pop in join us we're we're happy to talk michael elko final words emily i didn't know you had chocolate in your office oh, I'm in, uh, stephanie I don't, I'm coming. no i know you guys so anyway i'm avoiding all of that michael <laughs> i get into your office you like carry it um i just want to thank everybody for um participating today. And um, again, I urge you to join our July webinar for tutoring and disability services. That'll be very informative for you. We're here for you. Everybody has been saying that. Maybe that should be our motto. We're here for you. And we got you covered. We got you covered for that. But um, thanks again. And I look forward to seeing you all in the fall and hopefully at the webinar uh, next month. Our fearless leader, Molly, final words. <laughs> On a good day. Um, so anyway, I'm just really grateful that, that you took the time out of, out of your day to come and ask such wonderful questions. Uh, I hope that this was beneficial to you. Um, the, the, the invitation is open. Uh, we're available all summer, so you can connect with us. Shoot us an email if you want to have a video conference or, you know, uh, have a chat. We're here to do that with students. Uh, we know that there's a little bit more stress going into this semester than there have been in um, years past, but we're confident. Um, we're really good at what we do. We have a lot of fun, as you can see together. Uh, and this is just this is just one of of uh, many offices and many people that are really here because they care about students and they want to make sure that you feel like you're at home and that you are um, getting for the experience that you expect and the reason that you signed up to come to Point Park. So please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we're happy to help you from now through through the entirety of your career, um, and we just really look forward to meeting you in person at some point soon. Uh, Point Park is a great place. Pittsburgh, it's my city, is a wonderful city. If you need to know anything about the city, places to go, places not to go, where you should be, where you shouldn't be, um, you know, I'm always happy to chime in and give you a good recommendation. Uh, I've been to pretty much every square inch, so. I look forward to meeting you all and um, sharing the city and sharing the university with you. So we'll see you in the fall, if not sooner. Once again, I'd like to thank everybody for joining today. Thank you for the awesome questions. Please 
Uh, check your emails. Uh, you will be getting an email that has a link to the recording of this webinar sent in a few hours after it ends and uploads. It will also be on our YouTube page. You can follow us on all the social media at Point Park CSS. I hope everybody has a great summer. Be safe, be well, and we will see you soon. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Bye, everyone. Bye.